let's see. The boiler's fired up to 50 pounds pressure, being piped outside to the manifold that holds the whistles. Add a little more steam, and you're ready for a whistle blow. Around here, Frank Bopacek's in charge. He's a steam engineer, historian, consultant, entrepreneur, and dedicated teacher here at the Bergen County Vocational Technical School in Hackensack, New Jersey. And this is his way of celebrating what he sees as the poetry of steam power. The steam is my hobby as well as my business. And one of my uh, offshoots of my hobby is I collect and restore old steam whistles. And these are whistles which have been taken off the roofs of factories and steamships and locomotive whistles and fire whistles and things of this nature. And the idea is actually to blow these things and make some sort of noise with them. Uh, steam whistles, it's what gave the steam agents personality. You know, years ago, you could tell just what boat was coming up the river by the sound of its whistle. There really was a time, and it wasn't that long ago, when whole towns would set their watch by the whistle on a factory roof. Everybody set their whole life up by the way that a steam whistle worked. It, it was the living pulse of the nation, it seemed to be at one time. But if the whistle is no longer its living pulse, for Bopacek, steam still is the nation's lifeblood, whose power plants have to be managed by stationary engineers. That's what these students are training to be. And they've discovered that their diplomas are worth their weight in gold. And then he just came right out and he said, if you want a job, he says, I'll offer you 28000 a year. He said, come to me next year as soon as you get out of school. He's offered me a job starting at 26000 And my father knows a guy in Passaic. I'm not sure where, but it's a manufacturing company. And he's offered me twenty seven so far. Right now, there's a lot of plants, but not enough trained and licensed engineers. Rocco Tellickson from North Vale, New Jersey, near Hackensack, knows that. There's, there's a lot of money to be made. It all depends on the person, too. There's different grades of licenses. If you're willing to work up to the, your gold seal, which is the highest grade of license, I think the going rate is at least 60000 and up. With a future like that, he's got his schoolwork down pat. As far as math goes, I knew I could do something in math, like algebra and so forth, but I never wanted to. I never did good. I failed. I didn't care. I just did enough to get by. But when you can see the application to the work, that's it. You know what I'm saying? Then you want to learn it. So I can honestly have learned more math as far as uh, algebra and all the advanced math in this shop than I've learned in any math course I've ever taken. These are vocational technical school kids. And the, uh, all these vocational schools have always had a stigma. Uh, you know, this is where we send the kids that can't make it anywhere else. This is where we send the kids who are slow or we send... They've always had a, you know, they've always been dumping ground. Well, you find if you actually get in, you actually start teaching, you make the time or you find the time to actually know the kids, you usually find that it's an undeserved reputation. Let's do the uh, Liberty Whistle. It's the kind of reputation that caused a rich kid who went to the regular high school to put down steam student Ron Matthews. It was a classic confrontation between a future yuppie and a steam engineer. I was talking to him, and he's like, well, when I get out of school, I go into law school. I said, yeah, well, you have six more years of learning. I just graduate, and I can go into a job. And I'm like, I'm, th I'm six years ahead of you right now. Did you tell him what you'd be making? Yeah. And? He's, he's telling me it's chicken feet compared to what he's making, but I told him he ain't going to be making it right away. I can make it right again. I can, day after I graduate, I can take any one of the job offers I get, go out and make that money. He can make it anywhere because he knows how to keep the machinery going. And how many people know how to do that anymore? More than that, he'll be working with machines he's learned to respect from a teacher who's turned part of his classroom into a steam museum. Okay, now you work with me. We're going to work our way down the My first job is to teach here. My second job is to run an efficient plant. But if it happens to be a museum, well, why not? You know, a steam engine's a wonderful motivator, and that's one thing we're looking to do with youth today is motivate them. He has. And so, for them, school's a real... The screech of the whistle and the blast of the horn. They mean memories. But in these hands, they also mean pride and respect. A signal to the future that...